What is a pyroxene? Where can you find them? And how do you identify them? Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Brooke Johnson and I'm a geologist. A big thank you to my colleagues here who have given permission for me to use images from their work. You can check out their website and links to other resources down below. If you didn't know what below is, that's, that's below. Pyroxenes are silicate minerals, mostly found in igneous and metamorphic rocks, where they're a major rock forming component. Pyroxenes may also turn up in sedimentary rocks, but only as detrital grains eroded from older rocks. And even then, they're not that common. This is because pyroxenes form in higher temperatures and pressures than you would normally find in sedimentary environments. So this means that they break down relatively quickly in the cold, wet, organic rich environments of the Earth's surface. So they only form com a major component of sedimentary grains in special circumstances. For example, the sand on beaches of volcanic islands. The name pyroxene comes from the Greek word pyros, which means fire, and xeno, which means alien. So translation of pyroxene would be alien to fire. This is because in the early days of geology, it was thought that pyroxenes only formed from the metamorphism of existing rocks. We now know that pyroxenes can also form through the crystallization of liquid magma or lava. Pyroxenes are silicate minerals with a chain of two silicon and six oxygen atoms, along with various metals like aluminium, iron, magnesium, calcium, and sodium, just to name some of the common ones. Because of this structure, pyroxenes are also known as the chain silicates. There are two subgroups of pyroxene, the clinopyroxene, which has crystals in the monoclinic system, and the orthopyroxenes, which have crystals in the orthorhombic system. This information is mostly useful if you're trying to work out the types of pyroxene in a sample using petrographic microscopes. You don't need to worry about it too much if you're just doing some recreational geology, looking at like outcrops while you're on holiday or building stones. In hand sample, pyroxenes form stubby prismatic crystals that are normally black, dark green or dark brown. This basalt sample contains these large diopside pyroxenes, which have this dark green colour like old glass bottles. Pyroxenes are around 6 on the Mohs hardness scale and they have a vitreous luster, which means that they look like wet glass. And where they've been broken, there's a blocky fracture. Perfect sections through the base of the crystal will have eight sides, but may not be perfectly octagonal. If you want more detail on the terms used to describe the hand specimens here of minerals, then you can check out this video linked up there probably. Thin section under polarized light. Pyroxenes are usually colorless, but they can be gray, pale green, or pale brown. Darker colors are associated with iron rich varieties, which also may be darker brown, pink, or even violet. Pyroxenes have high relief, which means that they appear to stick up out of the slide and they might have a dark line around the edges of them. They also form stubby prisms with eight sides on the micro scale too, but only when they've got enough space to grow into their preferred shape. Pyroxenes have two cleavages that intersect at about 90 degrees, but this might not always be visible in all samples. Under cross polarized light, pyroxenes can show simple or pinstripe twinning, also known as lamella twinning. Orthopyroxenes have straight extinction, which means they line up with the crosshairs in the microscope and low first order grey colours. And clinopyroxenes have inclined extinction, so they go extinct at an angle, and they have higher second order colours such as orange or pink. So now we know what they look like on the micro and the macro scale, where will we find them? Pyroxenes can be found in most ultramafic and mafic igneous rocks, as well as in some intermediate rocks. Mafic rocks are rich in iron and magnesium, and ultramafic rocks are very rich in iron and magnesium. This includes rocks like pyroxenites, peridotites, gabbro, comatiite, basalt, and harzbergite. These rocks are usually dark coloured because of all of the iron and magnesium rich minerals, like pyroxenes. But some rocks like peridotite are green due to being rich in olivine and diopside pyroxene, which we already said was dark green. Pyroxenes are not common in felsic igneous rocks because the chemistry of felsic rocks tends to favour the formation of amphiboles, which we'll talk about another time. However, spodumene, one of my favourite pyroxenes, can be found in pegmatite, which is a type of granite. I love, the, I love saying spodumene, it's such a fun word. If you'd like a video explaining terms like ultramafic, mafic, intermediate and felsic, then let me know in the comments below. They're down there in case you've forgotten. <laughs> such an idiot. Pyroxenes can also be found in many metamorphic rocks, particularly those that started out as mafic igneous rocks. One of my favourites, and perhaps the most recognisable, is eclogite. Eclogite forms in high pressure 
relatively low temperature subduction settings although still like really bloody hot through the metamorphism of basaltic ocean crust where it goes down a subduction only gets squished by the overriding continent the pyroxenes here in these large masses of are green jadeite and omphacite. The other minerals in this rock are these prominent red garnets and these white and clear masses are calcite and quartz. So there we go, a brief introduction to pyroxenes. Once again, thank you to all of these colleagues for sharing their images for this video. If you've got pyroxene questions or there's another mineral group you want me to talk about, let me know below. You can also find me all over social media as Geology Johnson, and I'd love to hear about what cool rocks and fossils that you've been finding. Until next time, see you later. Take care, rock nerds. Bye-bye.